Hi, these are from Scrappy Mania, and today I got a product review. I was on HSN last month, and I did bought some things. And one of the products that I bought was this Crafter Companion 3D embossing folders, and I got the set of four. And I also got the other set, so I do have two sets. I got the Christmas set and also the um, regular set. And I will go ahead and put the link. But let me show you what you get on the in the Christmas set. In the Christmas sets, you get the stamps, and the stamp says, "Believe in the magic of Noel." Merry Christmas, season greetings, peace and um, joy and peace. Best wishes, jingle all the way. Winter wishes, and let it snow. So you get these cling stamps. And by the way, if you want to know how to store these, I I made this little um, pocket using a regular. Um, page protector. I got these small little um, three ring binders at my local um, store, Walmart store. And then what I did is I cut the tops off the, the packaging of the embossing folder and then I made some holes with my crocodile and placed them in here because you can easily take them out and put them back in and it will tell you what you know what the embossing folder will look like once you emboss it. One of the things that happens is it does open up as you can see here. So what I've been doing is I took a piece of tape. You can also use um, a staple and just run the piece of tape along the edge there and that will prevent it from breaking. So it does work and you can even get, um, I think I'm going to get a stronger adhesive and just put it on there and that will help it keep it nice nicely bind you can also put some staples and that might work too but I went ahead and got the Christmas for the Christmas version you get a stack of papers similar to this and those I put them in another container as you can see here and so I got the stack of papers here they're five by seven well, actually a little bigger than five by seven but I put the stack of papers here and then um, then um, you get for the Christmas version you get six embossing folder plus the stamps and you get the jingle bell and I don't know if you can see it but you can see that package right here jingle bell and it looks like that and then you get the Christmas village and I do have some samples of this one you get the pretty Ponsadias and that's how it looks. Hope you can see that. You get the holly and ivory frame. It's a frame. And it looks like that. You get the silent night. And I do have a sample of that one. And it looks like that. And then you get the sparkling snowflakes. So that's the Christmas version. For the other version, which I think is the everyday, it's love, hugs, and kisses version. I don't know. It's I don't know the name of. I'll put the link to these. So if you if you want to purchase them, but they're a little more now because I bought them when they were ten dollars off. And I do have a, a sample of each of these. So you get. Uh, I don't know the name of this one. So you get four dies, and I have samples of that I can show you in a second. Four dies. You get the stamp sets that says, Always in, in my heart, so sweet, hello my love, with all my heart, hug and kisses, like sunshine to my soul, enjoy every moment and forever in love. You get a pack of cardstock. And they got very pretty cardstock. And you also get a pa the pack of the Rocker Blocks. You get the whole collection. And I already have a set of these that I bought years and years ago. So these are going for my sister because she doesn't have these. And they're very nice for stamping. Now, there's a little issue with these folders. They're great folders. And I'll, sh I'll show you examples of how well they emboss. The problem with these folders is that they're thicker. They're 3D, so there's different levels of embossing on these folders. You have a, a deeper emboss in some area, a lighter emboss in other areas, that's, and that's why they had to make it so thick. It does emboss leather with no problem as long as your machine 
has enough pressure to do it. So now let's go over the machines that you're going to need in order to emboss. I used, a, so I have three different type of machines. I have the Cuddlebug, the Sizzix, and the Evolution. The Cuddlebug, I use a combination of B plates with A plates. So at first I tried the A plate with the two B plates. It was not going to happen. It was not going through. You had to really force it and it was not going through. So then I tried a combination of A plate, this, and the C plate. And it was not enough pressure, so it wasn't really embossing the, the different levels because the, the issue with these embossing folders and why you want to get these embossing folders is because it has different levels of impression. And if you look at here, you have the nice texture underneath the embossing leaves on top. So that's what I wanted to capture. And when I was using the different combination with the Cricut, not the Cricut, with the Cuddlebug, it wasn't working. I was putting too much pressure, it was causing me to crack, and yet it was not giving me the, the, the different levels of embossing that I wanted to achieve. And if you notice, I guess my Cuddlebug, there's not enough pressure in the center of the Cuddlebug. It's, it, there's more pressure on the size of the rollers. So that's why I see an uneven um, impression on that. So that wasn't working. So then I brought out my um, Sizzix, and I use a combination of, with my Sizzix, so let me bring you what I was using. At first I tried with this, and the Sizzix plates, it wasn't working, it wasn't going through, or if it went through, it didn't give me enough impression. Then um, one combination with the Sizzix actually cracked my paper, and was too much. And then I try using the magnetic plate Sizzix with just the C plate on top. That wasn't working very well. It wasn't giving me enough pressure. And then, it, it, then I started to shimmy it. It gave me too much pressure. So really the Sizzix and the Cuddlebug, I mean the Sizzix and the Cricut, you have to play with it. It's a little harder to get the level of embossing because either you put too much pressure your paper gets cracked, and it could be the junky paper that I'm using. This is die cut with a view. Actually, no, this is some kind of cheap paper that I bought at Tuesday morning. It cracked, no issue, big issue. Then this was a, using my Sizzix with different combination of plates. It's a little better, but I did not get the nice, see how it's not really embossing right there. I don't get all those different levels as nice as I would like it. Now, it's, you can use it, but it wasn't working that well. Here's another combination with the Sizzix and the magnetic plate. Didn't work. Okay. So then I started, I, I brought out my Evolution. The, the problem, the, the reason why I brought out the Evolution, because I know I can adjust my pressure in the Evolution and I can adjust it to get it the pressure just right for my rollers. So the combination, so let me show you what I used. It took a little bit of tries, trial and er error to get it just right. But if you look at this one, this was on my Evolution. And actually this, I put it on a setting of four with, I used a Cricut plate. So I used the A plate and then I used the C plate that I had to find, I don't know where I put it, but then I used the C plate to, to, oh here it is. So I used the A plate and the C plate and that's it. That worked and that created this. Okay. The cardstock also has a lot to do with it because um, some of the cardstock crack. And I also, one of the, the the ways you can prevent cracking is by putting some wax paper in between your paper and the embossing folder and that helps a little bit. So I did that with the second sample and it worked a little better. Okay, I did get some detail of imp impression but not as much with this paper with the die cut with a view paper. Then I started experimenting with their paper so I pulled out their paper and this was a setting of five. I put my evolution at number five. So 
you dial it to five right there I use a combination of a plate the folder and then C plate and it and with their paper she has wonderful paper it really worked very nicely see how nice now she did show um, Sarah did show on the show how you can take just regular uh, aluminum and put it on cart on back it with cardstock and just run it through and that's what I did with this and look beautiful you even picked up all the texture actually I thought it picked it up better the texture in the aluminum than it even did on her paper I love it it's not as shiny but it's it's a it's a little matte finish I really love how that came out here's the other one so these are the folders that come in this kit you get this one look how beautiful that one that one you get this one and this is the other folder so that's why I say I had samples of it beautiful so let me show you how it's going to work so how you get that so I have some regular cardstock that I made a boo-boo on. I made a lot of bookmarks and I didn't need that many bookmarks on some cardstock. So I can re reuse this. You take your aluminum and this time I think I, I used the matte side for those so I'm going to use the shiny side for this. And then you're going to do some spray adhesive. You're going to spray it, put it on here. So let me go do that off camera and I'll be back. So I went ahead and spray it and I'm using this Super 77 Scotch Multi-Purpose Adhesive. I sprayed my cardstock. I'm going to lay it down here. And you don't have to worry that it's all wrinkled. No big deal. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to cut this off. So I'm going to take... So now let's just remove the excess. So I'm going to place my ruler and just remove that. I did I used my Fisker cutter and that's how I got that it it got removed right here. See how it just removed it. So it's better just to take a craft knife press and then just cut it off. That works a lot better. Okay. Okay, so once you cut that, okay? You can go ahead and cut it in half. So let's see. So cut that in half. Hopefully it cut it. Okay, and then we're going to cut this in half. Okay, so now that I have everything cut, let's go ahead and bring the evolution. Push it in. You make sure that it's, I have it at four, or actually at five on the side, so let me show you that. So you want to go ahead and place it at the dial. You want to put the dial at the number five right there. Push it in and that makes it that it doesn't move. Now you're going to grab your plates. And I got to see where I put my plates. Okay. So you're going to grab your A plate. 
you're going to grab your embossing folder. So let's go ahead and do this one. You're going to make sure you put the silver part and the embossing side. So the bumpy side is going to have your, paste it, your paper facing up. So this is the bumpy side. You want to place your paper with the right side facing up on the bumpy side. This is the depressed side. Okay. So um, I want it to be raised here. So I want the depressed side on the right side of my paper. So if you put your paper, the right side facing up on the bumpy side of your embossing folder, you'll be fine. And unfortunately, these don't have A side and B side. So um, some of Anna's have A side and B side, and you can say put your paper facing up on the A side or the B side, but this one is not like that. Then you're going to go ahead and place your B plate or your C plate, sorry. It's going to be C plate. So A plate for the Cricut. I mean, A plate for the cuddle bug. So you're going to need your A plate for cuddle bug, your embossing folder with the paper, and your C plate. Now, this paper is a little thinner. So when I did the other one, this one, this one's a little thicker. I had to adjust my pressure to number four. So right now it's a number, actually, I got it at number six. So you want to go ahead and run it through. If you're meeting a lot of resistance, do not push it through. And see how easy it goes through my machine. I don't really have to even put any pressure. It just goes through. Now the beauty with the Evolution, you hardly need any pressure to really make it go through. So then I do it twice. I come forward, then I reverse my folder, and then I take it out. So let's see how it looks. And there. Now it did get stuck, so I may need I may need to put it at number four. So let's try it again at a lower level. But see it did go through nicely. So let's try it at a level lo lower level. So sometimes you, you got to play with this. So let's use, let me use this one. This is my favorite. The bumpy side is on the bottom. My cardstock is phasing up. So the, 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 the right side of my cardstock is facing up. Bumpy side is down. The deboss area is on top of my cardstock. I'm going to put a C plate. I have it at number four. And let's run it through. And I recommend that you keep a chart, if you like, of the pressure depending on the material that you're using because it makes a difference. So you're always going to have to experiment and make like a prototype before you really use do it on your project and that was the right pressure so number four for this machine and um, a combination of the A plate for the cuddle bug and the C plate and look how it came out so it came out came out really good so let's go ahead and try this one and let's do the same thing bumpy side is down and then I'm going to try to center that open area on my cardstock C plate and run it through and we'll do another one of their cardstock and actually I maybe I shouldn't run it twice let's run it twice the other time when I ran it twice, it got stuck on the embossing folder. Yeah. You only want to run it once. 
and there's that one. It got a little stuck here, so you want to run it only once. Now let's go ahead and run it. Let's use the last folder, which was this one. And I'm going to use one of their cardstock. I love the, these metallic cardstock, so I'm going to use a gold, bumpy side down, and um, just make sure it says craft a companion. Now I notice that they have the label right on the debossed area, so that needs to be facing up and that you can read it. And make sure that your paper, the right side of the paper, is facing up. This one, maybe I'll put it on five. Let's go ahead and see what happens. I think I did use five. So I got to start writing the, and see that's too much. It's not going through. So I'm going to put it to number four. And that, that did it. Number four for their cardstock because it's a little thicker. And maybe I want to go back. Do I dare to go back? I guess I do. Okay. Let's go ahead and see. And that really worked very nice. So I hope you like this video. And um, I gave you some ideas, tricks that you can use to use these new embossing folders. Because the sandwich is going to be a little different depending on your machine. So I hope you liked the video and thank you for watching. Bye now.